you want to know what's going on. I would say my work centers around both domesticity and or identity through relationships. And I try to bring a sense of wonderment to my work looking through the camera because that's where all of my imaginary worlds took place. One of the newest things that I've been incorporating into my artwork is this idea of exploring my identity as an artist that's visually impaired because I don't find it to be the only part of me that is important as an artist. That does have an impact on how I make my work, but I don't see myself as a visually impaired artist most of the time. I forget that I have these challenges in front of me. When I'm working with a subject, I'm thinking about first and foremost, how do I let their personality shine through? How do I get the essence of the person so that when they look at the photograph, they feel it's an accurate representation of who they are, but also, is it authentic for me? And that's a challenge, right? Because anyone can be self-conscious or have an off day, whether it's on my end or the subject's end. When I began the series Home Manicured, it was all about documenting the space, the color, the geometric design of the different rooms and objects in the room, and how much sentiment and memory went into that space. But then once you start to place people in the spaces, it becomes that much more vulnerable because now you can associate the people with that environment. The Nostalgia series portraits where I was taking black and white photographs in a space that was reminiscent of an earlier time, whether it was 1950s or the early 60s, with a lot of different analog technologies. I had one of my friends interact with a Victrola and sort of dust off, blow off the dust off of a vinyl record. Another friend was using a typewriter and he's a writer in real life, and so being able to tie in their hobbies or interests to those series. I myself have a self-portrait in front of a chalkboard, and I have a book and an old eight millimeter projector up front because I teach film studies. My film work is very diverse. I go between working on narrative pieces as well as experimental videos and films. It depends on what I'm interested in exploring at the moment. A lot of my movies center around relationships, whether those relationships are about friendship or romantic relationships. For this current series with the Fabric Portraits, I wanted to include my mom because like her, I have this visual impairment. It's genetic and runs through my family, and I happen to be the only one in my immediate family other than her that has the optic atrophy or, or visual impairment. We went out in the morning early one day when the sun was just coming up in the backyard, and I was able to get her to stand in front of one of the garden areas and, and take her portrait, which was really precious for me. So I asked her to wear a bright color that would contrast the background, which there was a lot of green foliage, so the orange really allows to be visible through the fabric and to have her shirt pop and also sort of the white slacks to be able to stand out against the darker trees and rocks that are part of that, that background. Because I wanted to figure out a way to work with depth perception, and most photographs are two-dimensional on paper, 
I had to find a material that I could actually create layers and hang them such so that we could get additional layer of dimension and space to the photos. And so fabric ended up being my way of being able to do that by having these three layers of fabric and where you can sort of see the person materialize the closer you get to that artwork, the better it is in terms of explaining like how I see. And stereo cards were initially a parlor pastime in the 1800s that people used for entertainment to look at photographs and they would create three-dimensional images. These particular stereo cards have the two images from the left and right that we would normally see are swapped so that it affects your depth perception where normally what you would see in the foreground moves to the back and what is in the background moves to the front. And because it's that exploratory moment that you're trying to find your, your perfect spot of vision, which also happens with my fabric portraits, of trying to find that perfect moment where everything lines up for you, for your vision in particular, and just your vision. Illuminated is part of the series that I've been working on with the fabric portraits and the still images. The series is called Blind Blend where I took a bunch of footage from going to carnivals and going to holiday display shows and anything that had a lot of lights and movement and was thinking about, okay, so if I take off my glasses and I am using my naked eye, how do I see the world? If it's blurry or it looks unfamiliar, can that still be interesting? Can that still be beautiful on its own? Do I have to always negotiate what I'm given naturally? Or do I always have to try to perfect my vision to be this, this ideal image that we've created for ourselves? So Illuminated looks at all the different lights that are happening from this uncorrected visual perspective. And I've used the camera to create that. And so even though some of my work is now about navigating the world through this different way of seeing, it's not the only aspect to my work. I feel like I'm constantly negotiating between these two different sides of my work or, or myself as I view myself. My name is Brittany Severance and I'm a photographer and filmmaker. Watch more Art Inc. with new episodes uploaded every Wednesday on ripbs.org slash artinc.